Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here are your hosts, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and as always, joined by the Carlton Banks to my Will Smith Hey, I'm the Fresh Prince here. My buddy, doing the Carlton, Mr. Brian E. Roach. What's up, Brian? I wish I could do the Carlton. I would love to be able to do the Carlton. I cannot do the Carlton. Well, I think there may be a few people that are going to be doing the Carlton, dancing their way out of Pittsburgh, as we've heard between all of these various uh, phrases since we last spoke. Um uh, let me see, Kevin Colbert, general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and uh, Art Rooney the second, apparently meeting with Antonio Brown. And that leads us to <laughs> talking more about Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown until we get rid of these guys, maybe. And then we're still going to be talking about, oh, replacing them and stuff like that. But that got me thinking. I got us thinking, actually. We were talking about free agents and things of that nature, but even looking at the draft and everything like that, you know, we've got some of this still a ways away, but you're looking at the Steelers roster right now and maybe trying to consider where do they have holes. And today, I think we want to talk about the offensive side of the ball because if we try and do the defense in this same show, myself and Brian will probably have all of you here for two and a half hours. So we're going to try and limit that and break this up a little bit. And we're going to talk uh, what the Steelers' needs may be in 20. 19 on offense. I love that idea. I think it was was skillfully uh, described and excellently uh, outlined. So we are getting right to the point today, which is, you know, kind of the, you know what, this gave me an idea because everyone was complaining about us a few weeks ago. I actually did this on my marketing podcast that I do uh, as well. And I said, get right to the point. So we're going to get right to the point here. I think I want to start with, why don't we just start with wide receivers since we're talking Antonio Brown. And um, a lot of people are thinking, well, gee whiz, gee willikers, how how are they going to replace Antonio Brown? I guess that's the big one that you got to think is a need is wide receiver or a need for the Pittsburgh Steelers right now? Well, if they trade Antonio Brown for draft picks, they have who who's left? James Washington, who was drafted last year, and Juju Smith-Schuster. So, Brian, would you consider, as I would consider, wide receiver a need? I mean, the Steelers draft wide receivers every year. I mean, I think they're always throwing a, a dart trying to find a guy like a Juju, not necessarily always with the second rounder. But I, I think they still – well, I forgot Ryan Switzer. I'm sorry, Ryan Switzer's there as well. So they have three guys on the roster that could, in theory, all be starters. I think they'll be looking to add to that or at least bringing a, a couple of these guys that may be hitting free agency, such as Darius Hayward Bay, Justin Hunter, or Eli Rogers back into the fold as well. Yeah, I, I think you may be overstating what these guys can be without Antonio Brown there. Um, Juju, Juju, I will say, is a starter. That's it. End of story. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I like Ryan Switzer. I like him. Uh, but as far as is he a starter, a true starter, uh, if he's asked to step up, no, I don't buy that yet. Uh, James Washington, still unproven. Do I think they can get there? Absolutely. Uh, Are they there as we speak, sit here, based on what we saw last year? No, 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 no. Now, is it a need? I think it's always a need. Um, It's always a need to keep the talent pool coming because you don't know, A, how quickly people are going to develop. You don't know, you know, what direction they're going to go. And I think one of the things we're learning with this Antonio Brown situation is receivers be crazy, man. (laughs) <laughs> oh, they're always crazy, aren't they? I mean, Ocho Cinco, Randy Moss, T.O., uh, Michael Irvin. Everybody has to be a, a diva wide receiver, it seems like, these days. I mean, uh, yeah, well, they just be crazy. So you got to keep the pipeline filled. Now, I will tell you, regardless of whether they move Antonio Brown or not, I think that receiver, because of this drama, receiver has become a much bigger need than it was before. Um, you know, with... With what's going on, you know, right now, every every I, I expect everything to sort of calm down for a little while. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we'll get another uh, Mr. Big Chest video or whatever the heck will we'll come on. <laughs> but maybe we won't. Maybe what we'll get is a little calm before they, you know, the, before something actually happens or doesn't happen. But if you can take Kevin Colbert at his word, which I think you can, in saying 
you know, unless it benefits us, we're not going to do it. What happens if it doesn't happen? And in that situation, I be, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that even if they don't move A.B., wide receiver still is a big need at this point because you don't know whether he's going to honor his contract based on what he's been saying. Um, you don't know whether he's going to sit out to try and get a better deal. You don't know whether he's going to pull an L. Bell and decide, uh, you know what, I don't need to, to play next year because I ain't got no guarantees. Um, you don't know. As a result, yes. My long-winded way of saying <laughs> wide receiver is a need, and it's a big need at this point. You know, Ben threw, uh, what, the most attempts or close to the most attempts. I'm going to pull this up here in case you hear some clicking here uh, on my mouse. Click, click away. Let's see. Yeah, Oh, yeah, overwhelmingly. What was I thinking? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not enough coffee. Uh, 675 attempts, f- by far the most he's ever attempted. And, of course, uh, 608 in that uh, Pro Bowl year. I should say he wasn't even a Pro Bowler this year. And, of course, 67% completion percentage for Ben, 5,129 yards. Uh, all, these are all career highs. Uh, not completion percentage percentage but completion percentage was only a tenth of a point off maybe maybe his best 2015 he also had 68 percent but you know Ben's playing at a very high level so they're hitching their you know they're they're they're, the horses are hitched to or the saddles are hitched to this horse and not necessarily Antonio Brown who you know Antonio Brown put up some big numbers 104 104 catches uh, almost 1300 yards the 15 touchdowns were big you think about how many more touchdowns he could have had where there were you know interceptions when he was perhaps the target he's done numbers that no one else has ever done he's the goat but yet it didn't even appear like he was the best wide receiver on the team this year there were lapses where he couldn't be found some people are blaming Ben or saying, hey, you know what, Ben uh, Ben was forcing it to him or Ben wasn't looking for him early in the season and all oh, this double coverage and everything is going to uh, – now it's going to affect Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju Smith-Schuster isn't going to be the de facto guy that you know led the team in receptions with 111 and had 1,426 yards among a bunch of combat catches, highlight reel catches, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, our buddy the professor, uh, he tweeted out in, not long ago, He's not sure why people say definitively that Juju can't, won't continue to produce without AB. Small sample size in three and a half games without Antonio Brown. Juju's stats are 26 receptions for 369 yards. Nice. 14.2 average and three touchdowns. And, uh, you know, that includes the... Uh, a terrible week 17 performance by just about the entire squad without Antonio Brown. So, you know, you look at that. I look at, uh, I look at some numbers too with Juju basically didn't come off the field. Antonio Brown never came off the field at all. Juju would come off sometimes, but as the season wore on his snap counts, you get into, you know, week, uh, week 11, 94%, 85%, 88, 87, 94, 92, 92. Three and that 93 was without Antonio Brown there. Antonio Brown practically playing, you know, 99%, 94. His numbers never really dipped too much unless he got dinged in a game, which is not very often. He was an Iron Man. You make a good point with James Washington, a guy they tried to get on the field but couldn't get on the field, and they should put Justin Hunter out there and try to experiment with him. He gets hurt, and then that's where you go from having James Washington inactive actually twice during the season maybe trying to prove some points with the rookie. Uh, he goes from 37% of snaps when he returns week 14 to 69, 36, and then 72 in the game without Antonio Brown. He played a, a, a decent amount of time. And that's not to say he had you know eye-popping numbers by any chance, only 16 receptions, 217 yards, and a touchdown. Um, Ryan Switzer had some uh, very similar type of uh, – well, I wouldn't say similar. He actually had better numbers than Washington. I mean, Washington had let's go back to Washington for one second against Cincinnati he had three catches for 64 yards he kind of finally popped off the page he disappeared to, on two targets didn't catch any against the Saints but against the Patriots also three catches 65 yards so he the light ball may have uh, went on for him late in the season and I know we're talking about needs here but what I'm trying to illustrate is is that when Switzer Switzer didn't get a training camp last year right. he was traded for late so they tried to integrate him in the offense they even put him in the backfield sometimes is like a running back and as the season wore on around that same uh, point where you get to week 11 you know a little bit past the bye because they had a week seven bye you, week 11 
37 percent of snaps 67 35 47 33 47 35 for a guy who's essentially the third or fourth wide receiver on the field not too shabby you also had Eli Rogers return week 15 44 51 and 63 now he'll be a free agent we'll see what they may do with him I could see him maybe possibly coming back Darius Hayward Bay pretty much a one-trick pony uh, a guy you bring in to maybe block here or there there wasn't any game except for the final one where he had more than 10 snaps he had 17 in the in the Week 17 Cincinnati Bengals game. That's a quarter of the offensive snaps. That was by far the largest. I mean, he has a snap here, a snap there. doesn't even show up on the field for offense at various times. And then a Hunter inactive for – let me see. He was only active for five games – Two of which being the big ones where they made um, Washington inactive, and then the Week One opener where you know Washington's a rookie and they're just trying to get they're feeling everything out. So wide receiver, the Steelers usually always draft a wide receiver. I guess how high of a priority will wide receiver be? I guess that depends on exactly what happens with Antonio Brown and what free agents are available that they'll look at. And and there's some, and they may look at somebody that's like a veteran. I remember Jericho Cotri coming in and being a contributor. This may not be something you you mentioned this before where you may be letting go of these great talents and these fantasy type big numbers but what does that do overall for the team and I think they're going to find a fit that's good for the team in free agency um, I don't know if it's going to be a big tall receiver I think they may bring one or two of these guys back into the fold so you already have Juju Washington and Switzer bring back maybe at least one of these guys that's going to hit free agency off of your own roster, bring back a nut, maybe bring in someone else that come off of another team. And then, uh, you know, you're kind of ensuring yourself based on what your board looks like with your other needs, which are we're, we're going to get into. For all intents and purposes, though, if you hadn't heard, folks, Antonio Brown should not be a Pittsburgh Steeler in 2019 unless. There's something happens where uh, the the organization doesn't get the value that they feel they they want or need from him, and he has a squabble and he sits out the season, or if he sucks it up and says I'm going to play anyway. But it, it, those seem like very highly unlikely scenarios at this point. So we're looking at wide receiver as a need, and, and probably a tremendous need where they're going to probably fill at least two spots with either a free agent or a draft pick. Yeah, I have. Uh... I, I'm on a. I've got a, a Zacadonia hive of, of my own going. I'm on the train for DK Metcalf um, or bust in the first round, uh, wide receiver. Uh, so my opinion is that's where they're going to get the best bang for their buck to fill this need. Uh, I don't. I don't hate the crop free agents that are out there. Um, I know that uh, Kevin Colbert told said yesterday that they're going to allow Eri Rogers to explore free agency, or he's going to. Not that they're going to allow it; he's simply going to do it. Um, you know, I while I think that there's the possibility they can find some veteran help, and I think they probably should because that room just got really young. If Antonio Brown's not in it, um, you know. It's hard to keep holding on to a guy like DHB, even though he's a special teams ace, when he gives you essentially nada um, from the receiving standpoint. So I, I think that they, they it may be time to make that change. It may be time to to look elsewhere. I think the Justin Hunter experiment is over, but I thought it was over last year. So um, that's that's my my view. Is I think that that they could go as high as a first round draft pick if they got right guys there. Now that's that's. Maybe very unlikely the way that this guy may test out, um, but you know, and, and it, it it always depends on how the board falls and if they manage to get a, a you know a secondary first round pick for Antonio Brown, who knows? Um, but I would I would not be at all stunned if they picked a wide receiver in the draft first or second round this year. Well, I know you're going to talk about that maybe in a future upcoming episode, maybe even as soon as you know this weekend or Monday about, you know, once again, what is the value for Antonio Brown? And I think that will hinge yeah. on how high of a pick they use on a wide receiver because if you have an extra pick, I mean, look at the Raiders. They can It's a kid in a candy store with Mike Mayock now as their GM. He could do oh, pretty yeah. much as he pleases. Hey, first-round pick for this, uh, not, not a big deal at all, right? So, um, yeah, that pretty much covers the wide receivers. I mean, even look at this way. They, uh, they had uh, Michael Thomas in for DHB, or they were experimenting with Michael Thomas very speedy undrafted linebacker uh, that's no longer with the team. The Ravens, right? The Ravens plucked him. Yeah, uh, off. picked him up. Yeah. yeah, they ended up releasing him and then practice squad and got plucked. 
So they were experimenting with other guys in that role already. So we don't need to necessarily rehash the free agent thing, but we could see that maybe wide receiver now has become a top priority. Though I still think the Steelers, with a Ben Roethlisberger, with a balanced offense with James Conner, and we're going to get into the running backs, I think they'll still – I still think they're going to be a okay with or without Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown made some amazing catches. He is definitely a great player. But, you know, as we talk and we go forward here and we talk about running back, because I think we could agree that quarterback is not a need <laughs> at right. all. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got, they've drafted a guy in each of the last two seasons and then they picked up um, 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 the guy from the Cleveland Hard Knocks, uh, Bro, Broback, Roback, Roback. I can't, yeah. they can't think of his name now. Uh, Kevin Brown. Back is that his name? Uh, Jerry so, Maguire. I don't know what his name Jerry is. Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Show me the money. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, they even have their camp arm. They're they're not going to go after anybody in the quarterback. Uh, f- f- position for free agency or draft it is a zero priority. Is less than a zero priority. It's a negative priority. Um, yes. For this team. So, I mean, we could jump into the running back thing because now all of a sudden the big news is Le'Veon Bell saying, oh, I'm free, I'm free, and it's just like free at last. And it's like, oh, give me a break, free at last. You know, this guy makes, he makes it sound free to do what exactly? Um, pro, what is it? Pro Football Talk was putting out in the morning that they're, the, the, a rumor that the Jets feel that Bell may have gotten out of shape. I mean, geez, are you, you kidding me? When we talk about these guys that haven't been playing football for a year or two, I roll my eyes as, you know, I'm waiting for the Johnny Manziel thing now oh what team might he go with and we all know about you know Colin Kaepernick and that news too and it's just like I think everyone's stretching for news here but the biggest stretch with the Steelers is is that you know that they're going to miss any production from Le'Veon Bell they're pairing it with Antonio Brown but they fail to realize okay Steelers didn't make the playoffs I don't think that had anything to do with Le'Veon Bell last year James Conner even getting hurt you saw what Jalen Samuels can do I don't. We already talked about not expecting Stephen Ridley back, so you got at least two backs there, maybe a fourth if you kind of count Roosevelt Knicks. They may draft or pick up another free agent. I don't have running back as a very high, as a a low priority, Uh, maybe just above quarterback this year because I feel you have two guys there. There's probably enough bodies that are out there. Maybe even in this Alliance of American Football, they may see some tape on somebody and you know give them a shot. Where they're, you, even Trey Edmonds, I mean, uh, yet another one of these Edmonds guys. <laughs> you know, uh, you never know. He was on the roster at the tail end of the year. I mean, obviously it was due to injury and things of that nature. So I mean, you look where they found Stephen Ridley. You see the success they've had. You know, with the offensive line and whatnot. I don't think running back is at all a priority. I don't think. It's even a concern. Le'Veon Bell is a name that doesn't even need to be uttered because we already saw, unlike trying to predict the future without Antonio Brown and can Juju be that number one guy? I believe he can. We were in this position last year with James Conner and Le'Veon Bell. We saw how that worked. We know James Conner is that guy. We know Jalen Samuels also offers a lot of upside. Long winded here, but running back zero priority, almost uh, maybe it maybe like a 0.5 percent priority at that. Yeah, I'm going to actually quantify my priority with a description of what I think they need. Um, they need a Stephen Ridley guy. And, uh, you know, if mm-hmm. Stephen Ridley's not back, which I don't expect him to be back, they need that guy. They need a, a vet who can, can bring some experience to the room. Because, again, this team has gotten very young in several of their rooms really fast. And while that's not a bad thing, you still need that veteran presence at times. So, but, you know, I don't think that's a hard guy to find. So, uh, you know, I agree with you. Hey, 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 I'm sure you're excited about the fact that Trent Richardson wants to come back to the NFL. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I mentioned that, though. I, maybe it was just in the back channels. I don't know if I said it here on this show, but he did, he reminds me of the Mike Tomlin quote about Arthur Motes maybe two years ago in the preseason about playing against JV players. That's what yeah. Trent Richardson looks like in the Alliance of American Football right now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not even remotely suggesting that should be on anybody's <laughs> radar. Uh, sarcasm is my second language. Language. But <laughs> <laughs> yours too. You know, yeah, <laughs> I thought uh, English was the second language for you, and sarcasm was your primary tongue. <laughs> well, it might be that. That actually could be correct. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm on board with this. I don't think running back is a high priority at all. Uh, I think they have their guys that they're going to use, but I do think that they will probably look at uh, signing a, a vet to help fill out the room. 
Perfect. Sounds good to me. Uh, what else do we have on offense? Let's see. Uh, I think we could talk offensive line in a little bit uh, ad nauseum. Let's jump over to the tight ends right now because we know Jesse James on paper uh, should be hitting free agency. I don't know that the Steelers necessarily allow that for depth. And, of course, Xavier Grimble as well. He was only on a one-year deal. Uh, I feel he's replaceable. I don't know where they stand with Bucky Hodges, who they brought into camp last year. Maybe that's a guy that comes to camp again this year and competes for a roster spot. I know some people like this tight end class. I know a lot of people are still concerned that Vance McDonald can't stay healthy. He had one of his best years, one of the most healthiest years, too, uh, now with the Steelers. And he's becoming a fan favorite as well as a favorite target of Big Ben. We see some, uh, we see Jesse still getting about at least half of the snaps, even. If McDonald's on the field, too, uh, it's one way or the other. So I don't know, even in this very – maybe before the Antonio Brown news dropped, you're looking at a best player available, maybe almost, a, dare I say, luxury pick with a tight end. But I think it's more luxury now if they were to go that high. Although this draft is very deep, but where would you put tight end as a priority? I don't see them bringing in a free agent. I think they re sign Jesse James. They may use an undrafted guy or a lower pick, but if they went higher on tight end, I think that kind of handicaps you. We're going to be talking about defense and those needs, and I think they need to use some of these higher round, like day one, day two picks on the defense rather than selecting a tight end. Yeah, I, I, this is a very deep draft for tight ends. I think that if they want to look at tight end, they can find a quality Jesse James type tight end uh, deeper in the draft. So I don't think it's a high priority as far as the draft goes. I also don't know that there's going to be anything that's going to be abundantly attractive to them in free agency. Uh, the best solution in my mind is you, you know, you you get Jesse James back in the fold. Uh, however, you have to do that. My my thing is, you know, you know, I'm I'm off the X Man train uh, with Xavier Grimble ever since that fumble, and I I'm just I'm 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 okay. I think he's always given us glimpses of potentiality. Um, he may be the best blocker they have as far as the tight end goes, but I'm done with him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, same thing with Ridley. I mean, uh, the fumbles, the yeah. turnovers will kill you. It will kill you. I mean, James Conner or like a Bell or somebody can get away with that based on their draft pedigree and production. But when you're getting very, when your name's not getting called very often and you make a mistake like that, it does not do well for your, you know, your stock value, so to speak. No. So, you know, I think that there's a chance they could draft a deeper tight end, even if they sign Jesse James to fill that Xavier Grimble role. It won't surprise me if he's back in camp as com- competition, unless he gets, you know, uh, something from someplace else. Uh, but I just don't see him being high in demand. Um, you know, I would rank this in the order of need above running back, but not high. Yeah, well, I think we're in agreement there. I mean, if they use the late round pick, let me let me give you something here. I already know you know you're going to know it as soon as I say it. Single season receiving yards record for a tight end set last year. And I know you know who set it was drafted in the fifth round in 2017, and it was a, somebody that was on our radar as were was 2017. I I felt was a deeper tight end draft, and maybe it's panned out so far. But just goes to show you a, a fifth round draft pick, George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. I know we were few of us like Eric Herman won't let this go, and I, I'm yeah. I'm with him. I mean, when he started banging the drum, I grabbed the drumsticks and I was with him too. And the guy's been phenomenal. It just goes to show you, you know, if it's deep enough draft and you find the right guy, uh, whatever be the case that made his draft stock fall. I mean, a lot of it sometimes is just other teams' needs. Other teams. I, I don't either, mean to. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, no, I was gonna say go ahead. I don't. I don't mean to downplay George Kittle. I think that I was. I was all about picking him as well. Uh, but you know, it does help uh, when you know your team doesn't really have any other receivers. Yeah, but they didn't have any quarterbacks this year either. So I mean, it, he he caught balls. He's like the DeAndre Hopkins of of tight ends. So. Um, just to, uh, we'll, we'll jump off the tight ends right now, but I think you could get a kind of a glimpse that there might be something there. I'm not going to say they're going to get a George Kittle, but you know, it'd be a nice, pleasant surprise. They have Vance McDonald under contract for quite some time. And if they make yeah. like a three-year offer to Jesse James, I mean, that, that won't hurt at all. I mean, Jesse James was basically the, is bridge the gap between Heath Miller and Vance McDonald. And they, they tried to replace him several times because of what he can and can't offer. He's a guy that, you know, shows up on like a little, uh, hook 
five, six yard hook route, maybe for a first down and it, it is, it is solid. But, you know, when he goes to run downfield, you, you see where it is. <laughs> He's not yeah. the, the fastest guy. Uh, it usually he kind of has the Martavis Bryant thing where there's not a whole lot of yak there either, which is yards after catch. So, yeah. uh, but n- not to crap on Jesse James. He was a fifth round draft pick. I think he's done very well for himself and I, and I would like to see him back. Um, yeah, I don't dislike the outlaw at all. No, not at all. Absolutely. Uh, and just to, you know, kind of to put a bow on this, we need to talk about offensive line. Uh, the Steelers had three pro bowlers, and, you know, something that was very interesting by our, our friend, the professor, too, had uh, mentioned, you know, no one's really talking about offensive line and, you know, contingency plans here. Marquise Pouncey drafted 2010. Centers can play a little longer, but how long does he want to play? We've already heard when Ben's done, I'm done. Ben's going to work on an extension. We'll see if uh, Marquise Pouncey works on one too. Locker room leader, Pro Bowl, perennial Pro Bowl type guy. Uh, you know, maybe they need to start looking at somebody behind him because uh, you're kind of presume here. I, I don't know. I can't presume what they're going to do with Ramon Foster because I couldn't pick. It, I couldn't figure it out the last time when he was up uh, for free agent when he was up for contract. It was him or Kelvin Beecham. And, you know, Kelvin Beecham, what? He just came off of that injury, and they found out, luckily, what they had in Alejandro Vill- Villanueva to move on from Beecham. I think they kind of have that glimpse with B.J. Finney, but I don't know if they're necessarily – what do they want to do with B.J. Finney here? Because, um, you know, B.J. Finney's a guy that c- that's versatile, that can play both Ramon Foster's spot at guard and also is the backup center, which has an awful lot of value. And uh, – Finney is a restricted free agent for this upcoming off season. I, you know, what, what kind of offer did they make a guy like this? Because, you know, in another year, maybe he feels the same way a lot of these guys feel. You're not going to hear it because he's like a backup offensive lineman, but maybe he wants to go somewhere where he can start and he can play rather than still being the alternative I don't know what you do because Ramon Foster, I think, still has a few good years left in him as well. And this may be a transitional period. Uh, obviously, Finney should be back. I, I think they may may bring Foster back. But when you look up and down the offensive line behind that, okay, I mentioned Big Al. We mentioned David DeCastro. You have Marcus Gilbert, who's been banged up over recent years, as well as uh, his replacement, Matt Filer, is an exclusive rights-free agent. So you got a lot of moving parts here. Uh, Gilbert, what, entering his last year of his contract, has also been in uh, maybe discussion of moving on from him. You got to start filling the coffers here. And Gerald Hawkins has been a guy who has been snake bitten and hurt. Uh, they drafted Chuck. Uh, oh, am I going to say it? I'm just going to say Chucks or Chooks. Uh, Chooks. A core four. Yeah. Uh, they drafted him last year and he got a little bit of playing time. So I think, like, uh, I don't know if the Steelers, I got some concern here. Maybe can they still go the undrafted free agent route and bring in guys without Mike Munchak as that guy to, you know, mold them into these full-time type players. You got two undrafted guys in Big Al and Foster that start. One of them is a pro bowler. I don't know where they go with all of this. Uh, Priority of offensive line, I got to put somewhere in the middle because I know we're going to talk about defense in the near future. Yeah, you know, the the thing about where they sit is, um, you know, you you nailed it when you said transitional period. Uh, Ramon Foster is a guy I think that they they should bring back and they will try and bring back. The question is going to be at what price. And if you remember uh, early in the season when when the O-line was talking about Bell, one of the big de- deals w- was money. And Ramon is has been a, a bargain for the Steelers for many years. But he is now an older offensive lineman. He's still, I, I agree with you, I think he's he's playing at the top of his game right now. Uh, he he continues to do a good job. He is a, a solid component of that offensive line. But how much can you afford to invest in a guy that's at his age? Um, you know, you, you're not going to give him pouncy money. You're not going to give him DeCastro money. You probably aren't going to give him Villanueva money. And and you know, so how much is how much does he want? 
Uh, and that's what's going to be the deciding factor, I think, as to whether he stays or goes. Well, you know, I got to chime in on that because our uh, pal, the uh, with our, with our own WTF uh, Terry Fletcher, <laughs> <laughs> wants to wants to give Antonio Brown's contract to Ramon Foster. That's how much she loves him. Although I think that would be v- very interesting for a uh, for a left guard. <laughs> so, so I don't think that's going to end up happening. But it, it's you know wish wishful thinking there. Did I say left guard or is he right guard? Jeez, I'm a, right guard. Yeah, right guard. Or left guard. You, left guard. Oh, okay. I think you were right. I yeah, 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 right. yeah. Left I'm guard. sorry. DeCastro's on the right. Blah, yeah, the man. Yeah, I DeCastro's told you. Right not enough coffee there. Well, it's a Castro you don't have to worry about. No. I don't think, you know, uh, Tommy Jaggy put out something that was very interesting about, you know, Mike Munchak's departure and what he's been able to do as an offensive line coach. And the Steelers have not yet had to use anything, what, the highest pick has been maybe a third rounder or a fourth rounder when you're talking about Hawkins or a core of four. They haven't had to go into the first and second rounds and had to take any type of gamble with those picks on an offensive lineman. And we've seen it pay off. We've seen the Castro pay off and we've seen it blow up in their face, i.e. Mike Adams. Uh, yeah. You know, that same year, actually. So I think they have it in a pretty decent position right ha- now when it comes to offensive line. I could still see them looking into the mid to late rounds as far as priority, but we know we're going to be getting into defense talking about, once again, our favorite topics, linebackers and secondary, and maybe some other pieces and parts in an upcoming show. So, uh, you know, I'm going to say this much offense versus defense, as far as your priority with the first. With the first two picks, would you flip them one or the other? Would you go straight defense or straight offense? I I, I don't know, man. You convinced me maybe that they if it if the right player is there and they're drafting a little higher than usual, wide receiver might be where it's at. Where did Kelvin Ridley go? Um, you know, a year or two ago with the Falcons, nobody really saw that as the what the Falcons were going to go after. And I think that even though they didn't yeah. have a very good season because they got holes elsewhere, I couldn't imagine adding a player of that type of caliber to. Next to Juju and with Ben Roethlisberger, the Mack truck, and Connor and all these other guys, it would be pretty exciting to see. Yeah, I, I just, you know, um, defensive playmakers are a priority for the Steelers when you talk about their offense, but I don't want to get heavily into it uh, since we're going to talk about it heavily later. But, I, you know, it's hard. It's very hard, and it, it really is going to depend, in my view, on – what they get out of Antonio Brown, if anything, uh, where where all that ends up, and, and how they're positioned on draft day, and then how the board just happens to fall. You know, uh, we've talked uh, in the in the in the uh, mock draft podcast, and I think even you and I have talked about this. I'm not fully enamored of this draft. Uh, there are there's some good players in this draft. Don't get me wrong, but this is not a draft that I consider to be uh, a historically good one. And as a result, you know, I, I think it's very difficult to say you have to go in this direction because you very well may not not be able to. Um, and so, you know, it's a lot of best player available type stuff in my in my head. And uh, so I, I just don't know. I think, you know, ideally, I think defense is the biggest priority, but. Uh, we'll, as I said, we'll discuss that later. But I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm on the. And this never happens because you know I'm a linebacker guy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm on the much. DK Metcalf train. I, I, I'm all DK Metcalf hive. I don't even know if I'm using these terms right. Zacadonia doesn't matter. Uh, that's the guy I want. And if that's if that means they have to use a first round pick to get him, then that's where I'm at. If he's there, I want him. Using these terms correctly when you call Zach Celadonia, Zachadonia. <laughs> he just chopped his yeah. name in half. Uh, just to give you just a little insight to last year's uh, draft, uh, 2018 draft, DJ Moore, first wide receiver off the board to the Carolina Panthers with pick 24. Two picks later, pick 26, the Atlanta Falcons get Calvin Ridley. Steelers are picking this year at pick 20. So that will be quite interesting. I mean, you had Denzel Ward go off the board fourth to the Browns, which I thought was a a shocker. Jair Alexander went 18th. Even Leighton Vander Esch was a guy that we were very high on. If you know, if you're looking inside linebackers, um, you know Tremaine Edmonds and Vander Esch were already gone, pick 16 and 19. By the time you get to 20, 
very much so could be a thing. And, and of course, Roquan Smith was another inside linebacker, and those were the top three when we did all of this stuff last year for certain. And kind of looks that way even now. <laughs> they had pretty solid rookie years, all of them, in my opinion. So it was just kind of like one of these things where um, – you know, you're at that position, and remember we were looking at Rashawn Evans. Steelers were picking uh, 28th, not 20th. So, yeah. you know, it's going to all depend exactly what's on their board, what they feel their needs are, because if maybe two of the top corners are already off the board and it's not a guy they feel they want in that position, they could wait. Or let's just say the case be that they either get an earlier first-round pick or something after pick 20 or – make some type of moves or get an early second round pick, they may hold off and be able to grab one of these guys. So, you know, we say that again, bottom of the first round is the beginning of the second round and vice versa. Very much so. Uh, we could definitely see something like that with a defensive pick or an offensive pick uh, very early into the draft process. And uh, don't rule out free agency. I mean, I don't want to throw names out there, but the one that's still sticking in my craw here is, uh, well, some people even mentioned Emmanuel Sanders having a potential return. And some people say that there's like some drama or risk associated with him. I don't know necessarily about that. I don't know what went on behind you know closed doors or if there's any animosity there whatsoever. We've seen guys come back like Antoine Randall L. Even Plaxico Burris came back at the tail end of his career. So uh, I just think Emmanuel Sanders would probably command a, uh, maybe a bigger price tag than somebody like a Golden Tate, for example. But if one of these guys is from is you know available, I mentioned. Jericho Cotri in the past mentioned Lance Moore. Uh, that might be something that helps bridge the gap a little bit, at least with a veteran player as you try and get a rookie, maybe somebody, like you said, like Metcalf, up to speed. Or maybe those guys are plug and play like Juju was and you know will be a day one starter. You never can uh, tell. But definitely with you there, uh, wide receiver something that I'm convinced now – especially Antonio Brown, they're going to move on from Antonio Brown. This is what they're saying. This is what we expect. So now with those expectations, that position is a position that is a top priority. Yep. I I, I couldn't have bet it, put it any better myself if I did. I know, and I'm I'm talking around in circles, so I think that's where we stand on um, on offense. Uh, we didn't talk fullback position or H backs or anything like that because uh, those aren't a priority either. So <laughs> we've got exactly we got Rosie. We got Rosie. We're, We're good. There's nothing else we need. So we are good. Thanks once again for joining me, Brian, and thank you all of our listeners for tuning in and also subscribing. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. Uh, keep the comments coming, everybody. We love uh, hearing what you think. Uh, and uh, we'll have an interesting podcast next week, uh, kind of a, a flip on our mock draft kind of stuff. Yep, and then we will swing back around with the defensive version of this show. Until next time, my name is Joe. His name is Brian. Be safe. Be good. We'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 